We will now be looking at how you can create a component using the wizard built into the DesignSpark PCB. In this example, we're going to be creating a microprocessor. Next, we're going to be looking at how you can use the wizard in DesignSpark PCB to create your own custom components. We are going to start with the schematic symbols. And here, you can click wizard. This is useful for items such as microprocessors and different chips. You can set your units here. I've set it to millimeters with a position of two. And once you click next, you'll see a series of options available. It could be a connector you're creating, a triangle, a rectangle with a series of pins, which you can specify. You can specify if the origin is at the center or at pin one and the positioning of the component name. So I'm gonna stick with the top rectangle. As you can see a preview here and click next. And you can also adjust the style and the shapes as well as sizes. I'm gonna leave that as it is. And here we have pins on your left, pins on your right. As you increase this, the design will increase accordingly. Uh, my design is gonna be six by six. And here you can specify the distance between the pins. For example, if I change it there, you can see it changes. Width across symbol. This is just to make your symbol as you would like. And also you can have the pin numbering, either, either spiraling, spiraling round or top left to bottom right. However you would like to do it. I often click spiral round. Spiral round is quite a good option. I'm gonna click next. And then you specify your symbol name. I will call it my first MCU. And I'm gonna click save to the symbol to the library, a library that we made earlier. Uh, I don't need to edit the symbol now, so I'll untick that option and click finish. If we open our library now, you can see the MCU schematic symbol in your custom library. So as we did for my first diode in the previous video, we're gonna to switch to PCB symbols and use the wizard to create the PCB symbol for our processor. I'm gonna work in metric millimeters, switch to a position of two and click next. So this is where you can select what kind of chip you're using. It might be QFP, QFN, and then DesignSpark creates this for you with your desired specifications. So I'm gonna select this design as this is the chip that I require. And you can have the origin at center or pin one. I'm gonna leave it as it is and move to the next page. The top option allows you to select the pad count so mine is currently 12 in accordance to the symbol schematic that I made. Shape, style, and here, these are very important. These are the measurements from the data sheet of your microprocessor or component. On many data sheets, you'll find very detailed drawings with measurements, some better than others, uh, but the more detailed, the better to get the most accurate design possible. So you need to fill these in, in accordance to your data sheet. I'll leave mine as they are and click next. Would you like a silk screen? Yes, top silk screen. And then here you can adjust if necessary, uh, the positions of pads. I'm gonna click next. Yep, that's all fine with me. You can adjust this if necessary. Footprint name, I'm gonna call it my first MCU. And I don't need to edit the footprint now. I'm gonna save it in my PCB library. And click finish. Now if we open our library, we we'll see our schematic symbol and our PCB. So now we just need the component to join these two together. So I go ahead and click Wizard, next, normal component. Here you can enter an RS number if you have a part from the RS website, makes, makes things easier. 
and the package you can select what kind of package you have I'm going to select user and your default reference you'd like to use on the symbol component pins are specified here we've got 12 with one gate and then continue next there is an option which asks you to select the schematic symbol you'd like to use I'm going to select this one and press next and then the PCB symbol which as you can see here is all correct I'm going to select next and next we have the part where we have to assign the pins so that the PCB and the schematic link together well so here I'm going to assign one to one so that the PCB and schematic are exactly the same in terms of pin layout and this first column is where you enter the terminal names for every pin. This is very important. You can get this from your data sheet so that every pin is labeled. Okay, I'm gonna leave mine for now and press next. And I just wanna save my component to the library, complib, and press finish. And here we have it. We have our component in our library already made and we can close that. So if we go back to our schematic, just to test it, we can add, yes, we can add a component here that we've just made. 